Today's agenda will introduce our newest touchpads, our H series, and go over their features. I will do a TPD and VPD product line overview, including comparisons with the older TPDs and the newer TPDs, and we'll go we'll show you the differences and we'll also show you how to migrate old projects into the new H version of the touchpads and VPDs. Then finally we'll go over some applications and we'll show you how to use the touchpads. ICPDOS was started in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan, and ICPDOS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. What is a touchpad? A touchpad is a combination of HMI and logic uh, controller. Uh, you can use ladder programming and you can use C programming to uh, create your projects in our HMI work software. The touchpad comes in various versions. There are both serial and ethernet versions. Uh, you must be, be careful to select the right model. Uh, the serial versions uh, communicate using our DECON protocol and Modbus RTU, and our ethernet versions communicate by Modbus TCP to slave devices, and some TPDs can also be uh, slave devices. So if you have a PLC already, you can use the touchpad as a Modbus or DECON slave. Uh, there are various sizes for the TPD series. We offer 2.8 inch, 4.3 inch, and 7 inch versions. And for the VPD series, we offer 3.5, 4.3, and 7 inch versions of the VPD. The right side shows the VPD series. Its main feature is it has IP65 waterproof housing and or front panel, and it has an optional rubber keypad in front. Uh, the left side shows an example of our touchpad in our white housing, and some versions have a real-time clock built in. Uh, there are two mounting versions available. Uh, the left side is our standard mount, and the right side shows a profile of our flange mount uh, for panel mounting. Uh, the panel mounting option uh, is shown on the back, on the left side. Uh, you must uh, use the attached bracket to completely seal the uh, IP65 watertight connection. Uh, the DIN rail mounting clip is shown on the back, and there are wall mounting boxes in very, for the various size touchpads available, and it's also meant to fit in standard utility box. Uh, touchpad features include high resolution color touchscreen. Uh, some versions have PoE power when it has an Ethernet port. Um, some RS-485 with self-tuner circuit to allow for multiple baud rates, or for any baud rate, rather. Uh, Real-time clock is an option on some. All of our touchpads have buzzers included, so you can uh, you know, make the touchscreen beep, or you can even play music with a, a, a program if you create it that way. Uh, the front panel of our VPD has an optional IP65 waterproof uh, face and rubber keypads. The operating temperature range is 20 degrees to 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, the H version differences, comparing the old to new. Uh, the old touchpads had no letter designation in front of it, so it'd be like TPD 280, whereas our new ones have TPD 280H or with H at the end. Uh, the newer versions have a faster processor. It's 2.4 to 1.5 times faster, depending on which version you're comparing it to. And it also has larger internal flash memory and RAM uh, memory <coughs> compared to the old. Uh, the screen sizes are the same, except for we have some new seven inch versions that are also available. We'll show you those. Our old ones, uh, some ran our mini OS 8 operating system. The new ones uh, do not. And we'll go over the benefits uh, in a few slides.
Uh, also, let's see, this is one of the more important features. The new H version allows for more screens. So where the previous TPD 280 and 283 only allowed for one graphic screen, the new version has four times the ability to have four screens. And there's comparison shown here between the old and the new version, depending on which model. And you can also have larger programs as well. The H version also supports MQTT. This is a machine-to-machine -machine Internet of Things connectivity. Uh, it supports only MQTT client. For product selection, uh, considerations are you need to know the size of the touchscreen you're looking for, whether it be a small 2.8 inch or up to seven inch version. If you need IP rating of IP65, then uh, you want to go with our VPD series. For our standard IP20 or IP40 uh, applications, you can use our uh, TPD series. You need to know what communication ports or protocol you'll be using. If you're using Modbus TCP, you want to be sure to select a model with an Ethernet port. And if you're using a Modbus RT or DCON, uh, you want to be sure to select one with an RS-485 or RS-232 port. Um, some of our models have real-time clocks, so if you do need to keep time of day or have a clock in the project, you want to be sure to select a model with the real-time clock. And finally, the size of the project or number of screens. As previously shown, the H version has a lot more memory in it, so you can keep more screens and have larger projects but you need to be sure to have an idea of how many screens and how much uh, logic you'll be performing to uh, better choose. Here's an example of uh, a spec sheet. So again, this one has the H version, has a 32-bit RISC CPU across the board. Uh, the memory expansion and real-time clock options are shown, uh, secondly. So for instance, if you wanted to keep time of day, you want to be sure to get our U version in this case. The non-U version does not have the real time clock. And then you must also select the communication interface, whether you need a serial port for RS or a serial port for RS-485 communication to either a DCON or Modbus RTU uh, device, remote I.O., <clears throat> or an Ethernet port to communicate to a Modbus TCP slave device. And finally, uh, the TPD-283 is, or TPD-283H is PoE only. So if you do need to power your module with a terminal block power, you can purchase the TPD-283U-H. That has both terminal power, terminal block power, and power over Ethernet capabilities. Here's a comparison of our old and new 2.8 inch versions. Some are being obsoleted. Uh, we're slowly transitioning over to the H versions. The H versions, again, have the faster processor and more screen capacity. Uh, most models are already out. If you do have older, older versions of the touchpad and want to migrate to our newer H series, in a few slides I'll go over the steps for converting the project. Also at the bottom for the TPD-280, notice the M versions, the MX version, where the M, or I'm sorry, the X would be one, or one, two, or three. I'll show you a slide right afterwards, which will show you the difference between those. Let's see, these are MX versions. So an M1 would be a white base plate. The M2 would be a gray or silver faceplate, and the M3 would be a black faceplate. These are optional. These are different from our standard ones without the M designation at the end. Our 4.3 inch versions, again, the old versions are at the top. The new versions are at the bottom. <clears throat> uh, the main difference, again, is memory and image storage capacity. The communication interface has stayed the same, 
So if you previously were using a TPD 430, uh, you just simply add an H at the end, and it'd be our TPD 430H. And again, I'll show you how to migrate the program in a few minutes. Uh, the 7.3 inch, these are only available in the H series, or they're now officially so-called H versions. These are uh, newer, and they have a 7 inch uh, touchscreen as opposed to 4.3 or 2.8. And they have either a 18 or 84 uh, picture uh, screen storage capacity. And they come standard with either an Ethernet port and a RS-45 port. For the VPD series, again, they have an IP65 front face, so they can be waterproof. Um, the front panel keys are optional, so uh, the left side shows with the panel keys, and the right side shows without the panel keys. And you can also mount XV boards to add built-in I.O. This is great if you only have a few I.O., and this way everything's included in the one housing, so you don't need to worry about communication interface. <clears throat> For the VPD, uh, the 3.5 inch, again, we have uh, various versions. You just simply add an H to designate the newer version, and the newer version is slowly coming out. These will be added to our website very shortly, so if you have a new application in which you may use a few of these, I highly recommend you use the H version because the, the non-H versions will be phased out shortly. <clears throat> and the difference between these is the uh, communication interfaces. So the ones ending in zero have RS-232, RS-45. The ones ending in two have RS-232 and RS-45, two ports versus one. And the ones ending in three have the Ethernet port for Modbus TCP communication. For our 4.3 inch VPDs, here's a, com a comparison between, again, the old and new. Uh, the main difference, again, being 32 screen images and 64 screen images. So it's great for the larger projects and allows for a faster processor as well. For our VPD, we're also introducing a 7.3 inch version. These are shown here. All of them should be out, either out or ready or very shortly. Uh, so if you are interested, you can inquire with our sales department and they can give you the latest update. The main difference is the X versions those allow the ability to put in I.O. expansion boards, which again will take the place of, or can be used in addition to, using the Ethernet port for communication to external uh, remote I.O. Or if you have no communication requirements, I would suggest just getting the serial version, which is slightly cheaper. Uh, the HMI Works development software is free, and it's used for creating the projects both the graphics and the logic for all of our touchpad and VPD series. It's got many libraries of images, and you can also import your own images and backgrounds. <clears throat> and it's C or ladder programmable, so if you do have logic, you can use C programming if you're familiar with that, or you can use our ladder function blocks to uh, do applications where you may just need to scale or create some simple logic. Uh, here's a picture of our HMI Works software. Uh, let's see on the left side are our toolboxes for uh, drawing images and for uh, file manager. Uh, the HMI design zone is a WYSIWYG interpretation of what you'll see on the screen. So during the design process, you'll see an outline. And whatever you put here on this screen will be what you'll see on the touchpad or VPD series. And you can create multiple frames as well. The right side shows the inspector and libraries. Uh, the inspector you can use to edit the currently selected uh, design application, whether it be your graphic. Uh, the library is an image library where we have some push buttons and some background images. 
and you can also import your own into the library. And finally, at the bottom, we have a results window which shows any errors and shows whether the compiling has uh, completed its process. If you have an old TPD and want to convert your project over to uh, the H version, uh, it's a very simple process. You must first make sure you have HMI Works version 2.10.11 or later. Um, let's see, then from the file menu, you select HMI and project configuration. Then you click on the general tab once the window appears and you select your new TPD version, whether it be H, TPD 280H or any version, and then click OK. If you are doing ladder pro programming, you must also do this other step. There's within the project configuration window, there's an other tab shown right here. Oops. Shown right here, and you must uh, select Use New Ladder Implementation for HMI Work, <clears throat> and then simply click OK. And there's a few uh, differences between the new ladder method and old ladder method that will uh, be disabled by checking that box. Then the final step is you must rebuild and re-render uh, the project. So you can either click on the build and render, or if you're ready to download, you could do run, build, and download to uh, complete the process. And we do also suggest that you create a backup copy before doing any migration in case something goes wrong. Uh, but you know, if you have any issues with uh, the old versus new, uh, please feel free to contact us and send us a copy of your program and let us know what's going on and we can take a look at it and see if we can help you to adjust your project. Uh, here's some applications for the touchpad and VPD. So you can use it as an HMI controller. So you can control an application like a conveyor belt uh, for uh, programming. Uh, so you can use it for home and building automation where you can communicate to some remote I.O. to read temperatures, control lights, control curtains, and do various other features. Uh, here's an application diagram where it just shows the various communications that most of our TPD and DPD have. So again, if you have an RS-485 port on your TPD, you can communicate to our DCON remote I.O. modules or rack systems. If you have any Modbus RTU slave devices, whether it be ours or any third-party Modbus RTU device, you can use the RS-485 port and communicate to those to control and to read values. And if you have an Ethernet port, you can do communication via Modbus TCP to any uh, Modbus TCP slave device. The TPD and VPD can also act as Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP slaves. You just must select the appropriate version. Uh, Let's see, note that the TPD-280U is at least required. The TPD-280 and 283 don't have enough memory currently. But most of our TPDs do have this feature. Well, let's see, here's an application where it was actually implemented at our factory in our theater. Uh, let's see, we used a touchpad to control the lights, read the temperature, and it communicated to our M7065D modules, uh, 19 of them, and 17018 to uh, read the temperature of the room. And it was displayed on the screen, and there's various images uh, shown at the bottom. Here's an application diagram for just home automation. So again, the TPD is connected to a switch so we can communicate via Modbus TCP to our PET modules and our PDS gateway, able to read uh, power meter data and also 
uh, communicate to other Modbus TCP slave devices to control various features like turning on lights, opening windows, uh, even for security purposes, you can have window sensors to determine if the window is open or closed. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Or if you have any questions after this meeting or if you're watching a recorded version, please uh, contact us by any means shown on the left side. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, we have a YouTube channel and Google Plus as well as Instagram and Pinterest.